overcome. The light, the light is Jesus Christ. He touched the blind and give them sight, give them sight. Keep us from guilt and sin. <laughs> he is the Lord for everyone, all who believe in him. Oh, the light, the light is shining on. Oh, the dark of night can't overcome. The light, the light is Jesus Christ. He touched the blind and gives them sight, gives them sight. <laughs> Good girl, mate. You stir me up. Amen. You know you want to stir yourselves up? Yay! Praise God. Who are you? Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? Close your eyes. Get an image of who you are. Get an image of who you really are. Well, let me say this to you. You've been made in the image of God himself. Now get your image. <laughs> it's going to change the way you pray. It's going to change the way you think. It's going to change the way you face things. It's going to change everything about you. What image have you got of yourself? Who are you? Who are you? I've got to tell you, I'm cocky. I've been a cocky person since I came in the kingdom. I think I was cocky before I came in, but it's just, I came in with a lot of confidence that God had actually paid the price for me. In my own thinking, I couldn't lose. I couldn't. Oh, that's the way I've always thought. In my own thinking, you didn't want to get in a fight with me because I wouldn't lose. I didn't care how big you were. I didn't care what I had to put up with. I had the mentality on the inside, I'm not going to lose. I won my fights in the ring for that reason alone. didn't care who they put us up against. I remember once I went against two weights higher than my own because the guy who was supposed to fight didn't turn up that night. And I said, will you take him on? I said, just hang on a second. I went to the pub and I put a bet on myself first. <laughs> 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 That's terrible, isn't it? In Hillsville. I, I was in the army boxing team. <laughs> and then I went and I said, let me have a look at the bloke I've got to fight. I didn't want to have a look at first. <laughs> and I went in the changing rooms and he was heavier than me, bigger than me. And I said, yeah, I'll fight him. <laughs> three three-minute rounds. Doesn't sound a lot. Three three-minute rounds are an eternity. <laughs> It is. Well, three of those. And I was fit, so I thank God I was fit. I came out of there, I'd lost my bottom teeth. <laughs> but I won a fight. <laughs> and I won me money. <laughs> and I had that attitude. So I've still got that attitude, I'm sorry. People say you're not supposed to have that attitude as a Christian. I've got to tell you, you need that attitude as a Christian. You've got to look at what you're coming up against and know you've already won. Whose side you on? Jesus. Amen. It's already won the victory. It's like he's putting his throat on your enemy and saying, beat him up as much as you like. <laughs> it's true. Mate, it's like my big brother. I've got a big brother. He was actually smaller than me, and I was caused to get in the fights because of him. He was always picking fights as a young man. <clears throat> and my dad said to me, look after him. He's not too well. My God. That brother, I'd like to beat him these days. <laughs> but he's my best friend, you know, like if we're, if we're good mates. And, and uh, he was cheeky, he was always getting me into trouble. <clears throat> but something that was instilled in me at the time was that we, I couldn't lose, I just could not lose. I don't know what it was, I just, it was in there. It was in there, and I can still remember some of the trouble I used to get into when I was a kid. So when I, I look at problems these days, I've still got the same attitude. You know, I, we've just had COVID, right? We've just had COVID, and I felt weak for the last two weeks. Today I woke up, I've got to tell you, I felt like Popeye today. <laughs> I woke up, 
I, I, I did. I woke up with a joy in my heart. Thanks for your prayers. I really appreciate all your prayers. But I've got to say this. Even when I was weak, I'm thinking, Lord, your word says when I'm weak, I'm strong. When I'm weak, I'm strong. So whether I'm strong or whether I'm weak at the moment, I'm already winning. This thing can't overcome me. And you know what the Lord put on my heart? He said, you know, now you've got your normal immunity. He said, you didn't take the jab. <laughs> you didn't need to. You're immune. I put you through something that's made you immune. <laughs> I let you go through it. It wasn't pleasant, I've got to tell you. It wasn't a good thing to go through. But I've come out immune. <laughs> you know what I was reading the other day? I was reading this in England. They jabbed so many thousands of people. And then the English report was that the people who have taken the double jab now have lost their natural immunity and can never get it back. Did you know that's a report that's come out through the Government Gazette in England? I mean, that's, I'm thinking, you little bitty. I want to tell you, I don't care whether you've had your jab or not. God's already covered you. <laughs> All right? He knew whether you were going to be weak in faith or strong in faith. Okay? So you're covered regardless because you're God's people. Why? He's made you in his image. I don't care whether you've capitulated to the enemy any time in your life because when he looks at you, he's looking at the finished work. He's looking at what he's done. You are made in his image. Oh, I've got to tell you, that just blesses me. I, I think we were telling that testimony yesterday. I shouldn't do that to poor old Red, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> God, God taught me. He said, never look at the problem you're looking at. Always look at you overcoming it. Always. And that's, it's instilled in me. I can't help it. It's, just, it's part of my makeup. If there's a problem, then we've got an answer. And the answer is Christ. It's nothing else. The answer is him and you, you're formidable. Whenever they see you coming, they're seeing your big brother coming with you. <laughs> you know, the enemy runs every time he sees you turn up somewhere. He can't help it. He takes one look. I, I tell you, I've been in situations where people have told me later, you know, we saw the images behind you, the angels backing you. And they're giants. I say, yeah, well, I get them into a lot of trouble. <laughs> they probably wonder why they got assigned. <laughs> I mean, overseas, we've been shot at, we've been stoned. I can't even begin to tell you what we've been through, okay? Oh, we're not preaching out of stuff we haven't been through. We've had people come against us, block, block the roads, threaten the start to kill us, to break our arms. I preached in one place, a place called, um, where was that place? It wasn't Belgum, it was a place in south of India. And uh, the, the night before we did a meeting and a lady who was blind got her sight back and the, the village went nuts. They just rushed and gave their hearts to Christ. And uh, Thampi, Pastor Thampi, what a brilliant man, he said to me, uh, we're back here on Friday. He said, that miracle has just stirred him up. He said, Friday, we'll have incredible miracles. We'll lead thousands to the Lord here on Friday. I said, oh, terrific. So we did other meetings and then comes the Friday, about four o'clock, we leave his compound and we're heading down south. It's only 40 kilometres away. It takes about six hours to get there because of the roads. And so what we would do, we'd stop at the beaches or wherever we were, plug in a guitar to any light socket and start singing, and we'd have a crowd around us, and we were leading people of the Lord all the way down to this meeting. <clears throat> and um, before we went there, he said, uh, he said, I've got to tell you, Raph, he said, and I had the niece and my children with me, and he said, uh, it's going to be a bit dangerous here tonight. He said, uh, after Wednesday night, he said the local Hindu fishermen came and they cut the lights off in the street where the pastor lives. And they went in there and they broke his arms. And they beat him terribly and his family. And he said, they're coming tonight to destroy the meeting. I said, is that right? He said, yep. And this, so I got this image. <laughs> I can't tell you I got this image in me. And I said, they'll only do that if you agree with them. 
but I'm not agreeing with you or them. I said, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen there tonight, Pappy. They're going to get converted. They're going to come and give their hearts to Jesus Christ because God's going to back us with signs, wonders and miracles. And he said, okay. Now, Thampy's an apostle. He's a beautiful man. And he goes, oh, like he forgot himself for a second. <laughs> and I said, I'll worry about Denise and the girls. We got on a calico stage with a band. And I said to Denise, I said, don't you sit on the stage with us, with the girls tonight. Go sit amongst the ladies over there, right in the middle of the crowd. And so she did. She went and sat on the rug on the, on the ground. And my kids, I mean, my kids have had some eye-openers, I can tell you. <laughs> so they sit, <laughs> they sit in the crowd. The meeting starts. And sure enough, there's about 18 of these Hindu fishermen with teak sticks, like solid, heavy teak sticks, all hand-carved, drunk. They come in and they've come through the crowd and cut a sway through the crowd and they've come right to the front of the stage and they're speaking in Malayalam, swearing at me. And um, Thampi says, uh, here they come, Raph, what are we going to do? I said, just stop. I said, I'm not stopping preaching. So I turned to them and I said, you guys shut up. I'm going to deal with you in a second. <laughs> so they stopped. <laughs> they stopped. And as I said that, a lady come running from the crowd, <gasps> speaking to Malayalam. I said, Thampi, what's she saying? She says a tumour has just fallen off her head and they all know her. <laughs> so now the crowd's gone nuts. We want Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The crowd's gone crazy and these guys, fishermen, are in the middle of them like a sea of people around them. <laughs> so I gave Thampi the, the mic. I said, you keep sharing the Lord, get them all saved. And I said, I'll deal with the fish, fishermen. So I grabbed the drummer in the band who could speak some English. I said, mate, I said, will you interpret for me? He said, where, where, where are we going? He's thinking we're going to minister to the crowd. I said, come on. And I grabbed him and I'm jumping off the stage right in the middle of these fish and he's going, no, no. <laughs> he, don't, he don't want to go there. I'm dragging him like a cat. <laughs> We jump in the crowd and I said, you better tell him exactly what I say and don't change one word. So he's poor, poor man, I felt so sorry for him. Now, the night before I was talking to a pastor, having uh, tea with him after we did a meeting, and I said to him, I said, um, I said where are you from? He said, well, Belgium, about 300 kilometres up the track. And he said, oh, we've had an incident. And he said, one of our pastors got beaten just like they did last night to the one down here. He said, really? He said, yep. He said, the four ringleaders died within the month. Dropped dead. He said, they couldn't touch God's people and get away with it. So now I'm in the middle of these firemen, of these fishermen, and I said, you boys are all in trouble. And I said, you know, I only just heard that a pastor at Belgum got beaten just like you did to our pastor the other day. I said, the four ringleaders are dead today. They dropped dead. God killed them. I said, you guys are in terrible trouble. <laughs> Mate, they're on their knees straight. Because oh, oh. no. <laughs> I've seen the power of God with this woman getting healed, right? I oh, use show people the power of God. They'll know he's there. Amen. And so there they are. <laughs> I'll never forget it. They're on their knees. And what are you going to do? I said, tell them they've got to give their hearts to the Lord. It's the only thing that's going to save them. <laughs> He'll forgive them <laughs> if they've given their hearts to the Lord. I want to tell you today, those 18 fishermen are in that church with that pastor and they're his bodyguards. They gave, they gave their hearts to Christ just as we spoke. i got an image that when we go somewhere, everything changes. Everything. Every solid thing changes. You Kiwis, mate, I love the Kiwis. I'm coming home. I'm going to the Kiwi He's telling me to go to do a job. I've been, I've been sent on. You don't mind if I tell you some testimonies? I'm, he's told me to go on a mission. This is in 2006. Bledstoke Cup was won by the Kiwis back from South Africa. Was that 2006? I know that because the plane I'm on has got the whole black rugby team from New Zealand 
flying back, and I'm sitting next to Lomu. You know who Lomu is? He was their champion. He couldn't stand sitting next to me <laughs> because the power of God was on me. And I started sharing with him. I started sharing the Lord with him. Within three minutes, he'd gone down the back of the plane to sit with his mates. <laughs> and to make it worse, I had a Benson and Hedges South Africa <laughs> T-shirt on, not thinking, <laughs> not thinking where I was going. And I was sitting next, next to Lomu. Williams is sitting alongside. He said, what did you do to him? I said, I'm just talking to him. <laughs> We're the front seat of the plane. We got the front seat of the plane. And so the plane pulls up in New Zealand. The first one's out the door are me and Williams. South Africa emblazoned all over. Mate, do you think the customs guys gave me hell? <laughs> there's, their, there's their team coming home pro proclaiming victory. <laughs> and they dragged us through customs. But as we go down there, the television's up on the, on the, uh, the, um, in the stadium as you come down. And uh, the minute my foot hit the bottom of that staircase off the plane, something changed and I sensed the change. Now, this sounds like I'm, bo I'm boasting, and I am. I don't care because I know what happened. I know what he told me before we went to anywhere. He'd said, anywhere you step your feet, wherever I send you in a foreign land, that becomes your land. All right? So I had that from the Lord, specific, spoken to me, okay? Oh, you want to get God to speak to you. That's why you need to converse. <laughs> and, and so I had this authority from God, and I've got the image of who I am, Christ in me. All I can see is Jesus in me. We get down there, we get through customs somehow, but I know something's changed. I know something in, in New Zealand has changed. Now, the reason we went was because Williams and I were praying, and I'm praying in Adelaide, and he's praying in Malaysia. And he phones me up, he said, Raf, he said, we've got a, a mission. I said, yeah, I know. I said, what did you hear? He said, uh, we've got to go to New Zealand. I said, yeah, we're going to Poverty Bay and we're going to release a Bible college in Poverty Bay. Now, we get this in prayer. I, I don't know how you people pray, but you're going to have to learn how to get intimate with God <laughs> because it's not set prayers, it's not religious prayers. I pray in the Spirit because that's where revelation comes, okay? I see you. This, this is a, going to be a good teaching tape. You pray in the spirit, revelation comes. I get it. My prophet mate in Malaysia gets the same thing. He says, I'm flying over. I'll pick you up on the way through and we'll keep going. So we did. Booked a ticket to New Zealand. And he said, why are you going? I said, we've got a little job to do. Now, when I say that to her, she's okay with that. If I say to her, I think God said, she said, you better rethink it, buster. <laughs> because I want to tell you, when God says something, it's real. You don't have to rethink it. He does, he's telling you it'll be accurate and he'll back it and you'll have all of heaven behind you. Oh, that image. That image. God send in his champion in. That's how I look at it. I mean, that's, I've got to, I look at myself like that. If I'm on God's job, he's sending me, I believe I'm the one he's picked to do that job. I'm his champion for that job. So we go. We land in, in New Zealand. It's 2001, the millennium. That's when it was, the millennium. And they're about to do a big bash in Poverty Bay, New Zealand, because it's the first place on the east coast that the sun touches for the day and makes the world clock start. <laughs> All right? This is the first place where the sun touches and time starts from there. The new day starts at that point. Now, all the new ages, they all know all this stuff. And they've got a hotel booked in Poverty Bay in a place called Gisborne. They've got it booked to celebrate the new year right at the beginning. And they've got bands like Split Ends. 
David Bowie, all these big names flocking to Gisborne to do the big gig. But the minute my foot touched, and I'm, I'm boasting now, and this is recorded in heaven, the minute my foot touched that ground and, and my mate Williams's foot, we touched the ground, we're in total agreement. Everything changed in that land, everything. It wasn't just a city, it was the whole country. The next thing on the news, you see this flashing. The team that comes in from South Africa, they're talking about they won the Gladstone Cup, they brought it home. Then the next news item is this. Big Bash in Gisborne cancelled. Now, I don't understand how that's tied to what we're doing. See, I'm not seeing that, but I'm remembering that news flash. And I know I'm going to Gisborne, so it's interesting to know the local news. Little did I know that the place we were about to release was the place where these guys were doing their big bash. All right? It had to stop. Oh, if only you knew who you were. If only you knew who it is that God's picked you for, the jobs he's picked you for. And you don't get to know it all. You get to know your pit bit and you have to act on your bit. You have to step out and do what he's told you to do blindly, but he's told you, so you're not so blind. It's his eyes that are going before you. Amen? I've got to tell you, my eyes were open to a lot of the ways the Lord works on that particular trip. We ended up in Gisborne. We had a hire car. We had probably one of the quickest trips down there, down the east coast. The roads down there were just like... <laughs> Is that it? Have you driven that coast? We had it locked to lock, flat out. We had fun, rally driving. <laughs> we, got, we got down there in record time. <clears throat> well, true confessions. <laughs> we got there in record time. <clears throat> We pulled up in a motel and we said, we're looking for a conference centre. And the lady in the motel said, we haven't got one in Gisborne. He said, yeah, you have. We've come here to, to go to a conference centre. No. And the Holy Spirit said this. He said, don't listen to her. He said, you listen to me in the morning. He said, I want you to go down that main road. He said, you go down there six, six kilometres. He said, you go around a crossing, to a roundabout, turn right there, and then you'll find a school. He said, go knock on the door of that school. And so we did that. We went and knocked on the door of that school and then told them what God had told us in our prayer closet. We're looking for a pastor and his wife who have been believing to buy a conference centre and make it into a Bible college. Well, they ran to get the pastor. Everything in the school closed down in two seconds flat because there's two strangers coming and telling them what they only knew. <laughs> They'd been saving up their money for six years and they had $600,000 and we told them what they had. See, the word of knowledge isn't just guessing. The word of knowledge isn't just a little cloud thing you're looking at. The word of knowledge is accurate. Here, we were here yesterday. Some poor man had his name read out. His, the town he came for, which was totally blew his mind, <laughs> and told why he was here. Do you know what that did to him? It changed his whole being yesterday. He was in total shock. And the word of that, knowledge is accurate. It's always in detail. I, I've got to tell you, I don't like words of knowledge that are just these airy-fairy things. I just, I, I just don't do it. The word of knowledge is with the knowledge of God. He gives you a little bit of the knowledge of what you need. And it's done by a spirit, and the spirit knows everything that's happening. Anyway, we get, is this helping? We get to this hotel, we follow the, the Holy Spirit, we end up in the school, and the place, they stopped everything. All the elders came out, the pastor and his wife, we said, we've come here to release a conference centre for you guys you've been praying for. 
They said, yes, it's over there. And they point behind the school, and there it is. It's the Gisborne Hotel. <laughs> it's also the headquarters of the mongrel mob. <laughs> Nothing really easy. <laughs> Do you want to explain who the mongrel mob are, Leroy? No, they're bikies. They've got moku. Their faces are painted fully with moku. They scare the living daylights out of people. They get scalp locks. They've got, and that's, is that, is that their standard? No. And they bring fear into people's hearts. And this is their little gang place. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's exactly. Anyway, then they give us a bit of a lowdown, these people. They said, that's the place we want. But we're a little bit frightened. <laughs> I said, you can't have fear, mate. I said, you've been praying for this. I said, we've come to release the place for you. We'll go and speak to the managers and release it. He said, well, you better know this. He said, um, last month they had two murders in the place and um, their licence has been shut down. He said, and today the news is that what they were counting on to carry them through monetarily has also been shut down. <laughs> their concert where they had the whole place booked out has shut down. He said, they're going to be in a terrible place. Said, Perfect for us. <laughs> Went and talked to the lady. The lady was a big Fijian lady. And I mean, big. <laughs> big, big. It's like you wouldn't want to roll her. <laughs> She'd knock you out. I went there and asked at the desk. I said, um, would we be able to speak to the manager, please? They said, oh, she's busy. I said, well, can you tell her that the Lord has sent us to talk to her? And the lady at the looked at me like, you some sort of nut. And uh, I said, please, can you tell her that? She so goes and tells her. And the word comes back. She says, she doesn't want to talk to you. She's Catholic. <laughs> I said, can you tell her I'm Catholic? <laughs> because that's I was brought up a Catholic kid. <laughs> And so she comes out. She said, the Lord wants to speak to me. I said, yes, he does, and you'll be very interested. I said, we've got somewhere quiet we can speak. She said, okay. So she takes us in the saloon. There's no one there. The place is just shut down. There's no, it's like a ghost town. But it's a beautiful place. And um, I said, uh, you've been shut down. You've been shut down with this concert as well. I said, all your hopes were based on that concert carrying you because you're in dire straits, your business is falling apart. I said, we've got someone who wants to buy your business. All they want, they only want your motels and your conference centre. I said, and God's got a plan for you. Your husband wants to keep the bottle shop, which is the most profitable part of your whole business. She said, hey, who are you? How do you know all this? I said, well, they're going to offer you 600000 You want $1.2 million for the whole place. I said, well, you're going to have to accept 600000 otherwise you're going broke. And, uh, and I think you need to give your heart to Christ to get your lives right, properly right with God. And she is flabbergasted that we know their business. She's flabbergasted that they, we know where they are, how, it, how it's happening, and that we give them a plan to keep them going. See, God, God's a good God. You know that? He's a good God. And uh, she just, she burst out crying. She gives her heart to Christ and she's just transformed. This beautiful lady is just fully transformed. And I said, we'll introduce you to the pastor and you can do the deal. Now the pastor's wife had had a dream the night before that this was about to come to pass. <laughs> Look, you know, when God does stuff, he just does it, you know. And we left, we left him with it. I left her a card, that lady, and uh, because she wanted to know who we were. I said, well, I'm from South Australia. He's from Malaysia. God spoke to us in two different parts of the world to get us to do this thing here. 
So anyway, we left them with it, did our job. We had the Hillsong Church in New Zealand, started Hillsong. They had put us up the night before because William knew one of the pastors who'd been to Malaysia. God did stuff in that place that still blows me out. I'd been ministering in Malaysia and I got something on my hand that God gave me. And I'd been ministering in Malaysia and um, in a place called Seremban and a girl come running out, a Chinese girl came running out, grabbed my hand because she saw Jesus' hand on my hand. And she grabbed it. And, I mean, it just goes against the grain for them to do that. And I'm trying to shake her off. I'm going, what's the matter with you? She said, I saw Jesus' hand on your hand. I want to touch it. I said, okay, if you've seen it, then what's on there is for you. It's yours. I go to the other side of Malaysia that week to preach in East Malaysia. And another woman runs out and grabs my hand. And I said, what? It's like, oh, this thing that he's, he's imparted to me, I knew I still had it, but I didn't. I couldn't see it. No one could see it, but they, these girls had eyes to see it. Turns out it was the other sister from Seremban. Oh, it gets worse. I end up in New Zealand. The place I stay at is the third sister who went. You know, when God puts things to you, I'm telling you, you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. It's a third sister. And when she heard my name, she said, oh, you prayed for my sister in Saraban and in, in East Sabra. I said, yeah, are you the sister? She please pray for me. Can I have that too? Okay. And he takes me to New Zealand. This is a bonus. The guys at Hillsong, New Zealand, get to hear this from the sister because it was one of her, that's she was one of the ladies in the church who actually opened a house and took us in. So then they ask us to minister to all their pastors. So then this is before we get to Gisborne, we minister to 40 of their pastors at a morning session. And they said, look, we've got a guest speaker from coming from Canada, but we've got satellite churches. Do any of you pastors want these guys? And one guy said, I'll have them both. <laughs> They grab us, and we had revival in his church when we got back. The guy who was there, Grove, was 2IC of the church. He wants to come because he knows we're on a, on a trip, and he's been in touch with Williams' ministry, and he knows it's phenomenal. <laughs> so he wants to come. We said, no, you can't come. This is a job we have to do, and we've got to concentrate on it. We can't get set off track. He said, please come back and minister when you get back here. So that night, this poor Canadian guy was trying to minister and they released Williams and I in the crowd. And I don't know why, but the anointing was thick and it cut a sway through the crowd like it was you know, 10 people wide and three or 4,000 people deep and we're just cutting through and they're just going down like 10 pins, the whole, the whole place. We didn't get to say anything. We just, we just prayed for them because the anointing for that job was on our lives understanding who we were. I mean, Williams and I walk like two cocky dudes. <laughs> when, you're, you know, when you're ministering, I, I must, I've mellowed a bit, praise God. <laughs> but when you're ministering and you know that God's backing you 100%, you have the image God has of you, not the image that the giants have of you. You are the giant. You're the giant slayers. You're the giant killers. You know, you stop and look at the giant killer. What was his name? Young David. <laughs> Mate, the whole army is up there, six weeks getting challenged by some giant dude, a man who, who used to have to sleep in an 18-foot bed. <laughs> Scary dude. Moku. <laughs> All these dudes. They, they're horrific-looking dudes, aren't they? They, they are. You, look, you don't want to be in another room with them. <laughs> hey, they are demonic. They're demonic people. That's what they are. But, mate, God sends in giant killers. He sends in giant killers. See, I'm not going to preach something to you that we haven't lived and that we've had to overcome. When God sends you, there's no fear in you because it sucks all the fear out of you. 
God does something in your believer. <laughs> he changes the way you look at things. You see it from his point of view. My God, I've got to tell you, I, it does something in you. I don't care what you're facing. You've already won. And even if it looks like you're losing, you've won. <laughs> because he's on it. Just persevere. Go through it and just believe that you've been picked by God to do it. And every one of you, I tell you, if your prayer lives change, I hope this makes you hungry to get in the prayer closet because it's in that place you get marching orders. It's in that place God can touch you and change you on the inside with the stuff that you still carry. And we all carry things. I don't think there's one holy roller in this place. <laughs> Truly. We all carry things. God's trying to touch these things and just get them out of our lives. Overcome them. Because when you do that, he's going to be able to fill you. He's going to, your image of you is going to change. It's, it's going to change. I've got to tell you, it's going to change. It really is going to change the way you think about yourself. And God wants you to change. He wants to build something out of you. What you started off with in this kingdom is not how you're going to end up. The weak you that was there, even if you were a tough guy, is not how you're going to end up. You're going to end up victorious. You're going to end up finishing the work he's given you to do. You're ruined for anything else, so you may as well keep going. If you get a bad image of yourself, he says, what's he say about don't shrink back? because my soul will have no pleasure in you. People who shrink back when God is telling them to do something are going backwards. That's called backsliding. People who look and think, I can't do this. And God says, that's right, you can't, but I can in you. <laughs> that's faith. That's faith. You can't do it in your own strength. Oh, but when he tells you. My God, you get supercharged. Poor old Red. I feel sorry for Red. That place in his home that day, and I had an Indian wrestle with him. I've got to tell you, he could have made mincemeat of me in the natural. His, his arms are three times bigger than my legs. <laughs> Muscle bound. Am I right? <laughs> He's a wrestling champion. Indian wrestling champion. And I looked at him. Because the Holy Spirit put it on me and said, challenge him to an Indian wrestle. I said, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, if you're telling me, I'll do it. But I, I wouldn't do it without you telling me. But now I'm expecting because he's spoken to me. I said, I think I'm going to beat you at an Indian wrestle. And he laughed at me. He said, look at your skinny little arms, Raph. He said, they're like matches compared to <laughs> no, I said, we'll see. I said, I'm going to beat you. Come out of my mouth. I said, I'm going to beat you. I didn't say, oh, yeah, God. <laughs> I didn't look at the, the possibilities. I just said to him, I'm going to beat you, and I meant it. <laughs> and Bricky looked at me like, are you nuts? <laughs> he, 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 he looked at me like, are you nuts? I said, no, I'm going to beat this bloke. <laughs> so I grabbed him on that arm, and he just went. Tow. I said, oh, that's the problem. I said, that's my good arm. Let me... Let me Indian wrestle you with my bad arm, <laughs> my weak arm. He said, Raph, he said, please. He, like he was trying to be nice to me. He said, don't do it. He said, he said, I went easy on you. I said, I know you did. I said, so try your hardest. <laughs> I said, because I'm going to. Like that, he gets me to about that place. And I, I've got to tell you, I nearly went over. And I'm trying, so I'm doing okay. And I said, Lord, I need your anointing. Boom. It was like that. You talk to Bricky, he was in shock. It was just like strength came on me. Supernatural strength came on me. No one could have, he would never have beat me, I can tell you now. It just came with power. I can't explain it to you. All I know was the anointing of God or the presence of God was all over me, and he was doing it. <laughs> and Red's in shock. His eyes are like, whoa. <laughs> And squealing like a little girl. <laughs> you hurt me. 
<laughs> well, I'm laughing by this time. Bricky's almost fallen off his chair laughing. <laughs> because the anointing came on us. The image of what God sees in you is exactly who you are, not what everything else is looking at. Amen? Amen. You can do exploits for God. You can never say, I can't, because in your strength you can't. But understand who you belong to. Understand the image he's made you in. He is the image that they see. What about young David? He looks at this giant, and the giant says, you send me a boy. He said, don't you worry, mate. I said, I'm going to have your head on, on the plate tonight. <laughs> he said, the birds of the air are going to be eating you up. Changed how he spoke. He spoke in line with what God was saying. And then he ran to the battle. He wasn't weak. He was, he, I can imagine the joy he had in his heart. I've got God with me. <laughs> I've got God with me. Saul had offered him his armour. He said, I can't, that doesn't fit for me. I know who I am. I'm not going to fit in your armour. I'm fitting in mine. I can't fit in your armour either, but I can fit in mine. And you can't fit in my armour, but you can fit in the armour that God's made specifically for you. In fact, I'm going to prophesy over you. Leroy, stand up right now. Stand up right this minute. Put your hands up. You're under arrest. The Lord says to me right now, he said, he's dressing you for service and he's making a suit for you that only fits you. And you've been learning things in this place, says the Lord. Things that you're going to start to put into practice. And you've been telling people these things. Praise God. Yeah, well, see, I'm, I'm, look, I've got ears. I've got to tell you, I've got ears in the spirit. And I hear these things. But I'll tell you right now, tonight, he's put on my heart to release this one thing. There's a suit being made for you. Can't fit anybody else. It's a suit of armour. It's perfect. It'll dazzle the enemy. It'll dazzle the enemy. Spend time with him more than you ever have. You're ruined for anything else, son. There is nothing else. I'm telling you. I know. What you're hearing here, you're going to do these things because he's going to handpick you to do them. Have a boldness to go. Don't worry. You've got nothing to do it with anyway. And God says he'll supply your needs. You're in the best position of anybody in this place to hear what he says and be sent on missions but make yourself available. You know what I used to pray? And I made him sick of hearing me. If you're going to send anyone, send me, Lord. If you're going to send anyone, please send me. I want to, I want to see what's in the Bible. I want to live what's in the Bible. I want to be someone who does the exploits that's in the Bible. And when you get that heart and you get that image of who you are, nothing will stop you. Nothing. I think you've had enough tonight. Father, I pray, Lord, that everyone in this place would receive an image that's from you, an image of who you've called them to be, an image of exports you've got ready for them. Every one of you has little miracles in front of your life that if you have ears to hear and eyes to see, you will just recognise while you're there. Amen. And expect the miraculous to flow. What did you want me to pray? You wanted me to pray the anointing, a brand new anointing? Well, this word's already releasing that to you. Pardon? For everyone, yeah. Well, this word's releasing that right now. See, you need an anointing for boldness. You need an anointing to hear. You need an anointing to act in obedience. You need an anointing to get hungry for the things of God. We're too blasé. We think we read the Bible, but we read it with wrong eyes. It's real. It's a real book. It's a real exploit history of what's already happened. And if it's happened once, it can happen again and again and again. If it's in that book, it's been given to you to act upon those things. Amen? Get the image God's got of you. Look in the book. It's a mirror. It, they, they call it the mirror of the word of God, don't they? Look in that word. It's a mirror of who you are. Amen?
Father, I thank you for this in Jesus' name. I thank you that you're releasing it supernaturally to your children tonight. Just receive it. Just receive it. It's like a mantle above your head to a lot of you. Just, you know, when you get anything from God, you grab it. Grab it both hands, will you? It's yours. You take it by faith. And your hands lifted up in praise receives things from God. Do you know that? If I want to get anything, I'm not going to get it with my hands down. I'm not going to get it anywhere. I'm going to get it from the Lord. I take it. Some of you are going to feel the weight of a sword that's coming down, a sword on your lives. Leroy, this one's for you. Open your hands, mate. <laughs> There's a sword, a big sword coming on your hands to do the exploits that God's going to call you to, and you will feel the weight of that sword coming on you. Oh, there it is now, coming down. Oh, glory. There you go. Take that from the Lord. Take that from the Lord, son. Philip, same thing. Philip, God says he's been training you the last two years to expect, to expect like you've never expected in your life before. You're looking for time to go backwards, for the clock to be turned back, says the Lord. That's what you're asking for, and it's already been released. And with it will come exploits you need to do. Paulina will need to understand where God's telling you to go and do something, and you'll back you 100%. I'm telling you the anointing right now has been released for these things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, it's God. Amen. Yeah, it's God speaking to you, boys. It's, it's a few, Debbie. Debbie. I don't know what it's all about, but I know this. Restoration is on your life, says the Lord. Restoration is on your life. So don't look at circumstances. <laughs> don't look at circumstances. <laughs> Because it's impossible for you, but God says it's not impossible for him. Okay? Take that to the bank, sis. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I think I'm done. Thank you, Father. There's people here right now thinking, oh, give me a word for me, Lord. Well, God wants to give you a word direct. <laughs> Amen? Just say this, will you? Lord Jesus. Is this for me? Because I receive it. Because I receive it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And all the saints said, God bless you. Wonderful guest speaker next Sunday. Uh, you're going to be blessed by this. Uh, Steve, you know Steve McAllister? He's, he's coming to preach this weekend. Right? You'll be blessed out of your socks by that man, I tell you. Because I'm going away. 